We are back here on the Choose 954 podcast, episode 74, with our dear friend Kelly Talladay, our upcoming AAF Creative Zen speaker this Friday for our four-year anniversary uh, event. If you didn't know about Choose 954, uh, we started a social movement, myself, Evan Snow, and my business partner, Mr. Andrew Martineau, to cultivate culture and community here in Broward County, where I'm very proud to be born and raised from in an effort to keep people in the know with all the great things that are going on to make this a better place to live and not just a better place to vacation. The point of the podcast is to connect you with amazing people in the community like Kelly that do some awesome things that you're about to find out about. And uh, we'll tell you a, a little bit more about Creative Zen in a few minutes. But before we get there, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself at a high level? Yeah, thank you so much, Evan. It's such an honor to be here and to be featured on this upcoming Friday for the four year anniversary. So excited for that. Um, I am a South Florida local, born and raised. Um, I grew up here, you know, my whole life. Um, traveled and lived around the world and landed myself back in my very hometown that I grew up in. So it's kind of been a real big full circle for me and how amazing it's been to see the South Florida community and, and wellness and arts and fitness and the restaurant scene and everything just exploding in such a way that I couldn't have imagined <laughs> just <laughs> looking at, you know, my hometown of Pompano, just looking at the Pompano Pier and and what they're doing there in an old Pompano, it's just, it's just amazing to see. And we're, we're so blessed to be back here again, um, being a part of this community. So thank you for. A mother of one crazy little girl. She's uh, almost two years old and I've got two dogs that are equally as crazy. Um, I'm a wife. I am a yoga and meditation teacher. I've been teaching for about five or six years now, practicing for the last 15. Um, and truly my purpose is in being a retreat facilitator um, of all sizes of small local events to big international retreats. And as I'll talk about later, my, one of my big passions is travel and how that has the capacity to expand, um, to expand your consciousness and awareness of the world and of how humanity works in such a way. So to be able to bring yoga and meditation and wellness and travel all together into one um, purpose that really sets my soul on fire. Um, it's such an honor to be able to do this work. So that's just a Amen. little high level about me. <laughs> Amen to that. And uh, that's how we connected through our dear mutual friend, Chloe, AKA mm -hmm. the Gemini. Um, and shout out to Pompano. I actually grew up down the street, not too far in Coral Springs. So it is really cool to see this resurgence of Pompano. I'm glad that we're able to play a little, little part in supporting the community. So uh, for those that are not familiar with your story, and we don't want to give the whole thing away because she will be sharing the full version of her story uh, at Creative Zen this Friday morning, which is a free monthly breakfast lecture series. Uh, mini TED Talk to connect, engage, and inspire our community. Uh, for those not familiar with you, how did you get started on this journey of yours? Yeah, so like I said, I've been practicing for about 15 years. And um, I, growing up, I was a competitive swimmer. Uh, I swam four, five hours a day, every single day, 365 <laughs> days a year. And as you can imagine, there's only so many times a human can rotate their shoulders before they uh, <laughs> before they give up on you. And I developed tendonitis as a 15 year old. Um, so my coach had said, let's get you in the sauna, let's do stretches. And at the time, Bikram yoga was just starting to really take um, take foot in in uh, in the West. And there was maybe one Bikram studio, super fringe um, in Pompano at the time. And he said, you, you know what, I've heard of this, you know, heated, it's like you're stretching in a sauna, basically, it's perfect for you, go do it. And I was like, all right. And me being the competitive athlete that I was, I loved it. I loved the mirrors. I loved the sweat. I loved the grit. I loved the competition, which of course was mainly just in my own head competing against other people. <laughs> but I, you know, I just thrived off of, um, off pushing myself. And um, especially as a young teen, 
we're, we're mainly physical beings. We're mainly using our bodies to explore the world. And you don't normally get to tap into these deeper states of consciousness because we are so based body based at that age. Um, and so being able to just like burn myself completely out physically in a Bikram yoga class and then lie on the floor and, and head into Shavasana, which I've never felt before. I mean, I grew up in Catholic schooling my whole life. I, you know, I know what prayer is and this, that concept of God that Catholic schooling gives to you, but I had never really had what I would believe to be a true conversation with God or what I now call a higher power. Um, or perhaps my higher self. And I remember my first Shavasana ever after just slamming myself in handstands and crow and all of the crazy stuff, I was laying in Shavasana and I had a true, just this, this deep inner voice come to me. And I wouldn't say it was like that big booming fatherly voice that some people talk about that God has, I guess, but I definitely had this sense of this higher power looking over me. And I remember thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Like I'm going to do this practice for the rest of my life. I'm going to own a studio. I'm going to be a teacher. And I was 15 years old. Um, and that just kind of guided me through. I, I never thought I would actually be a teacher. Um, I never thought I like, like in, in my think monkey mind and my thinking mind, I never really thought that would be a possibility for me because you know, I wanted to make my parents proud and get a, you know, a high rolling job in marketing or be a lawyer or whatever, all the crazy things that were told in high school that are considered quote unquote successful. Um, mm -hmm. But there was just this very deep inner knowing that, that this practice was going to be a part of my life for a very long time. Um, so yeah, it really started mainly as movement, the asana um, for a very, very long time, because the majority of yoga in the west still to this day is primarily asana or movement based the physical postures um but over time after about a decade and traveling through asia and which we'll get into later i'm sure but um i found the right teachers at the right time that were able to really help me nurture this relationship that i have with this inner voice this higher consciousness whatever you'd like to call it um and dive so much deeper into what the ancient yogis were able to um, pass down to us. So, so, you know, graciously, and we're so grateful for that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the start of how, how it all started. It was meant to be rehab and changed my entire life. <laughs> that's amazing. And anybody who's ever done hot yoga, Bikram or otherwise, will know that first Shavasana after getting your butt kicked more or less mm -hmm. in a positive way, uh, is one of the most relieving and fulfilling experiences, which is why you heard me snickering as she was outlining and explaining it from my own yogi experience. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that with me and the viewers and listeners. And I, I don't normally uh, really get to ask this in this context to too many of our guests on the podcast, but I felt it was a uh, really, you know, natural thing to ask you. So what has this work done for your life personally and, and even now professionally? Well, I think from a personal level, um, it, it's helped me develop that relationship with that inner voice that I heard for the first time when I was 15, um, even further, and not just to be able to listen to it, but to be able to trust it. And every event in my life, when you ask me, you're going to share your story on Friday, you're going to share your story with our community. And I, I was looking back at my story and every decision, every life change, pretty much anything good that has ever happened to me has come from in some way or another listening to my inner voice and then having the courage to take the risk to follow it. And I don't think if I didn't have this practice, one, if I didn't have the right teachers, if I didn't have the right practice, and if I didn't have the right community around me, having the courage to take those risks and really follow that voice when we are not 100% sure where it's going um, I'm not sure I would have had the courage to take those risks and, you know, I might not have ever, you know, landed myself in, in Dublin and met my husband on a random pub night. You know, I would have never maybe landed myself in Sydney. I would have never, I, I might, I might not have ever taken the leaps that I needed to take to be able to follow my life the way that it is. And 
And I truly credit my practice as being a stable um, force in my life. When I, I can always tell when I'm getting a little shaky or unstable emotionally, it's like, okay, when's the last time I really sat down and, and connected into that inner voice, connected into my heart. Um, and the practice, whether it's purely a physical practice for you, or you're getting a little bit deeper into your meditation practice or your breath work, um, it truly gives you um, the means to be able to cultivate spaciousness within your body, within your mind. It gives you that space to pause so that you can respond to life rather than reacting to life. And when we respond to life from a place of intuitive wisdom and groundedness, things just seem to flow. Even when they're not going exactly the way you plan, you're able to just accept as it comes your way. And instead of pushing and pulling your way through life, you're allowing more spaciousness, you're allowing more flow and, and things just seem a lot easier that way, even through the darkest times um, that I've been through most recently in the past week, losing a very, very, very dear friend. And I was just, I was telling you, Evan, like, thank God for this practice. Like, thank God for, for the teachers, the practice and the community that I've surrounded myself with, because otherwise this would seem insurmountable. And truly that's what it's given me um, is just this feeling of, of peace, knowing that the safety net is there for me, even though I can't see it. Amen. And um, sorry for your loss, of course. Um, uh, and I, I couldn't agree more. We're not doing uh, video for this recording, but if, if we were, you would see me throwing my hands up in a round of applause for everything that she was <laughs> saying uh, in regards to the benefits and, and impact of a yoga practice for anybody's life, if it's purely for the physical uh, or, you know, or even just purely for the meditation aspect and the mindfulness aspect. Um, we're obviously both huge yoga, yogis and yoga <laughs> advocates and, and uh, thankfully have implemented these practices into our lives and, and, and now work to spread um, the gifts of these practices. And you've thankfully um, made amazing strides uh, over the years to this stage of your life and your journey and your career now. Uh, so for those that are not familiar with your work, what are you currently working on uh, right now in terms of your, your current offerings? Yeah, so at the moment, um, I am working with my beautiful business partner and our mutual friend, Chloe Ravel, who um, for those who are coming on Friday to the event, we'll be able to meet her as well. Um, we have created um, our business called Rising Nature Retreats. So Chloe's individual business is the Gemini Rising and my individual business is Hello True Nature. So we combine the two together for Rising Nature Retreats. And we really focus on creating transformational wellness experiences. These aren't just, you know, quote unquote yoga retreats. Um, where you just walk in twice daily yoga, get your healthy green juice and you walk out. We're really looking for the students who want to dig deep and, and explore their inner landscape and be able to um, find the nuggets of wisdom that are already within themselves by being able to disconnect from their daily life by going on retreat, whether it's our monthly mini retreats that we host here in Pompano, actually at my home, which you've been to, Evan. We miss you. <laughs> you come back soon. I will. Um, and so we do those as a way for people to get a little taste of what it's like to get go on retreat with us. And it's, a, it's really accessible. If you live in South Florida, it's you know, a three hour event on a Saturday morning, beautiful practice, meditation, and sound healing. And then we have a guided group discussion based on the theme of the month. And we invite local vendors and local sponsors to come to the event so that you as a guest get to connect even further with the local South Florida community, which is, you know, our mission is so connected to what Choose 954's mission is, which is to continue to amplify the community um, that is vastly and rapidly growing at the moment. Um, so that's what we do from like a local level. And then um, the the main core of our purpose is our signature retreats, which are 
usually between four to seven days and we take those around the world um and so our our most current one is actually next week in Asheville but um for those listening that are interested we do have one locally in Florida in Ormond Beach about three hours north of here um and that's in the fall which is going to be absolutely amazing as well um but yeah, that's mainly the core of what I'm focusing on. So I have been a yoga and meditation teacher for five years. Um, and I used to teach in studios quite regularly. Um, and now I just really focus on these, these really impactful events um, that, that can have long lasting impact without needing to, you know, get on your mat absolutely every single day, which would be amazing if we could. But I, as a mom, I understand how like limited and precious time is. So I love being able to curate events where people can can be able to take away little nuggets, little practices, and then implement them in their own lives without having to rely on a teacher every week to get that feel good feeling. We want people to feel empowered to take what little time they have and implement what the practice that suits them best rather than the teacher saying this is the only thing that works or you know, all the crazy stuff we hear sometimes from, from gurus and Hmm. and all that um but that's really the core of what we what we do is is offer a wide variety of variety of modalities from a wide variety of different um lineages perhaps even different cultures that we've been lucky enough to study with um and me and chloe really bring a a blend of of different styles and backgrounds and even from coaching mentalities as well we have different backgrounds in coaching so that's what we're working on. I, um, apart from that, I have a online um, coaching program for moms um, and that's called Thrive Like a Mother. I can definitely give you some more information on that after, but it's more of like a self-paced online coaching. It's all online. All the modules are there. You go at your own pace, which works really well for moms. Um, but yeah, it's just been such an honor to continue to study with some of the top women's health yoga therapist in the world to study with um, my teacher who's the longest serving yoga educator in Australia um, and to just be able to travel and continue to make connections with some really impactful people just um, it reminds you that it's not so much about the social media followers that you have or you know, the amount of clients that you have, or, you know, it's not really about the numbers. It's about the individual impact that you're making on a one-to-one -one basis and how that can ripple out into your community. And that's, that's really what I try to focus on here um, in South Florida. Amen. And you do a great job of it. Uh, oh, as, as I had uh, mentioned uh, previously, my first yoga teacher, my guru, Chloe Ravel, aka the <laughs> Gemini Rising, uh, is Kelly's partner. And she couldn't speak highly enough of Kelly. And I did attend one of their first uh, mini retreat experiences at her home in Pompano. And it was uh, definitely, definitely uh, left an imprint on me. Unfortunately, the scheduling hasn't worked out for me to attend the last couple, but I do plan to join you guys again. And it's uh, made an impact, I know, on multiple people's lives, including our dear friend, uh, Seth Gilson, a.k.a. The Mindful yes. Doctor, <laughs> sponsor because he was so moved from the work you guys are doing. So you really are truly making an impact. And we really do want to commend you uh, and Chloe for the work that you guys are doing. Um, for those that would be interested in potentially uh, taking advantage, maybe not of this next retreat, um, just based off it being next week, but uh, for what you do have coming up next, uh, could you maybe run some dates by for the mini retreats, the Ormond Beach retreats? And even if you don't have dates, maybe some uh, thoughts as to some offerings of what might be coming up next in the future from you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So if there is anyone out there that is really leaning into their spontaneous spirit, we do have one spot left to Asheville next Wednesday. So, hey. so you know, I'm all about spontaneity and leaning into that intuitive wisdom and taking the courage to take the leap. So. There is a spot next Wednesday. It's May 20, May 18th to the 22nd um, in Asheville. And then uh, our next monthly mini retreat is in June. Um, that's going to be our Yogi's Gone Wild summer party, which we're really excited about. That's on June 18th from 8 to 11 a.m. 
Um, and all these links, all the brochures to everything is in our, the link in our bio on Instagram. We'll have it all, you know, connected and we have all the information. We normally take a break for, from the monthly mini retreats in July and August, just cause it's just so damn hot <laughs> outside. <laughs> and we don't want anyone melting in the summer sun. So we will reconvene on September 10th. Um, same time, eight to 11, same place in Pompano. Um, and then our Ormond beach retreat, which is uh, one of our signature retreats from last year, our be here now retreat that is September 29th to October 2nd. Um, it's probably one of the most I've, I've hosted five, six retreats now. It's probably one of the most beautiful houses I've ever I've ever led a retreat on or even been on a retreat to. Um, and we have the most amazing chef. She's our, our signature chef. Um, In-house massage. There's kayaking and paddle boarding on the river. There's an infinity pool and hot tub. It's, it's, it's next level. And we, we really try to pride ourselves on making it as accessible as possible for people in terms of travel and cost and everything. So um, again, that's, and if you go to our Instagram, that's in the, the link in our bio there as well. Um, and then, yeah, we're, we're starting to plan for 2023. So if you're interested in having an input in where we go, we're going to be putting out a poll in June, asking our email subscribers, where do you want to go in 2023 and really taking that into stock. So if you want to be a part of this and, and really be a part of our community and, and shape our whole next year, then definitely subscribe to our email list as well. Amazing. Uh, and Kelly is very, not only well traveled, but very well experienced. Uh, I, I don't want to give too, too much away because we do encourage you to join us this Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. at Kith & Co. in Oakland Park, right near City Hall, for our four-year anniversary installment event of AAF Creative Zen uh, Monthly Breakfast Lecture Series mini TED Talk that served as my initial aha moment that led me down this crazy arts, culture, and community building and now yogi path, thank God. Um, Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, which is why I continue to pay it back and pay it forward and continue to host these uh, free events with free coffee, a free guided meditation by our dear friend, Chloe. Um, and it, you know, there's no catch. It's something that I've seen proven to be successful, not only in my own life, but in over 200 other cities around the world that have a, a similar platform um, just to connect, engage and inspire our local community by bringing in a thought provoking uh, and inspiring speaker to share their story. And we're uh, very glad to have the stars align this Friday to have Kelly share her story. So the doors open at eight 30, the talk starts at nine. Uh, we're generally out of there by 10 and um, you can find out more if you type in AAF creative Zen register on Eventbrite, Facebook, all that good stuff. You can see the images on Instagram and, and all that. Um, if they want to find you on the social medias, where can they find you on social? I know you have a few. Yeah. So the best place to find me now is at rising nature retreats. And that is uh, both on Instagram and Facebook. Um, that's where I'm, where I'm the most active at the moment. And then my individual uh, coaching business and one-on-one -on -one clients is at hello true nature um, again both Instagram and um, and Facebook um, so yeah and then I also have a website um, hello true nature.com that'll have all the information for both both rising nature and hello true nature um, so those are the best two places and definitely if you do follow just shoot me a dm and we can chat and I'll you know follow back and we can we can continue to, you know, build the community together. And I'm really excited for Friday. I, I've, I've loved every event that I've attended. I've met some really awesome people. And I just want to put a little shout out that if there's anyone listening here who has, you know, a local business is, has a product or a service or just wants to get their name out there in the community, we're always, always, always looking to connect with like-minded local businesses to be able to be featured, you know, vendors and sponsors at our mini, mini retreats too. So we, I just want to 
put that out there that if anyone's like, Hey, I would love to connect with their community. Like we want to connect with you too. And just, um, it's a total like free flow of just seeing what works for the two of us. So just definitely reach out if that's something that you're interested in. Amen. Found some great brands. Uh, when I attended, uh, Buddha pants, CBD company, a bunch of, bunch of, uh, really talented and passionate local small businesses. And I really commend you guys on leveraging the platform uh, to support these local businesses and really create uh, an amazing space in your space and, and her space, uh, one of the coolest backyards I've ever seen in Pompano. Uh, <laughs> Thank um, you. I, uh, before we wrap up, I do want to encourage you guys obviously to join us Friday. If you're looking for some other cool stuff to do, uh, we, we actually have a really cool first of its kind festival happening this weekend uh, with Mezcal Lauderdale, a first of its kind Mezcal festival, Mezcal being the cousin to tequila coming from the agave plant. Um, it's a smoky liquor. It's a, it's definitely a, a beautiful acquired taste and it's becoming an emerging category. Uh, so our agency, the Unitas group uh, being Mezcal lovers and, and liquor lovers uh, also behind the Femme Brew Fest decided to create this platform to highlight and showcase over 30 uh, Mezcal brands from across the country, actually, I guess even across uh, the continent now, since we're bringing in people from Mexico. So that's going to take place at the Toro Latin Kitchen in Dania Beach at the Le Meridian Hotel, which is adjacent to the Design Center of the Americas, as well as the Fort Lauderdale International Airport, right off of 95 in Griffin. Uh, it's going to be super cool. And uh, there's a grand tasting on Saturday from 3 to 7 p.m. where you'll be able to taste over 30 brands and actually over 90 labels of Mezcal. Some of these are multiple hundred dollar bottles uh, where they'll be providing unlimited sips. There's food pairings, uh, after parties. There's a brunch the following day, Sunday. Um, at Toro as well. So you can find out more at mezcallauderdale.com. And if you really want to go and can't afford the ticket, uh, feel free to drop me a note. I'll do my best to try to hook you up. And uh, we're still leading free tours of the downtown Hollywood Art Walk every third Saturday night of the month, seven to nine o'clock with a free tour of the downtown Hollywood Mural Project at 6 p.m. Uh, that's a great event. If you haven't been before, it's continually growing, going on its 16th year, proud of support. And uh, if you're a local artist, you know a local artist that wants to plug into their community, uh, we have been resuming our in-person Choose 954 Artist Potluck series, actually right around the corner from Kith & Co. We're going to do it again at Art in Oakland Park Studios, Angela Rush's studios, uh, on Saturday, June, I'm sorry, Sunday, June the 12th. Uh, it's in the early evening. And uh, all we ask is that you bring a plate for maybe five or six people since not everybody eats everything, get to meet some fellow contemporaries of yours. If you're an artist, it is specifically for artists and get to plug into the community. We've seen beautiful friendships form, uh, beautiful collaborations happen. And it's something that I'm glad we're able to continue doing. And for more, you can uh, subscribe to Choose 954 newsletter. It's bi-weekly. It's not spammy. Just trying to keep you guys in the know with cool stuff going on like this uh, as we work to cultivate culture and community. If you want to reach out, you can find us at Choose 954, at EvanSnow13 on Instagram. Uh, drop me an email. Drop me a line. I uh, would love to hear if you know somebody that you'd like to see featured on the podcast that has a story we're sharing as we're an open book. And one last question, Kelly, if you'd be so kind, um, mm -hmm. this one, I would really love to hear the expert from uh, insight from an expert. What would you say to somebody, a friend of a friend, a friend's husband, somebody that doesn't practice yoga and might or might not be in good health and good shape? What would be... Um, an encouragement to try to get somebody who we know would benefit from the practice of yoga into yoga. Cause it doesn't just happen by you telling somebody, Hey, go to yoga. And they say, okay. So what would be something you would potentially, uh, you know, recommend or share or tell somebody that might be on the fence or, 
you know, definitely could benefit from the practice. Yeah, you know, I wish it was that easy. Otherwise, my husband would finally <laughs> have gone to a yoga class after nine years together. <laughs> but I'm lucky if he'll just even try to touch his. Really changed my entire outlook. I mentioned before how I was very movement focused, very postures focused. Um, and I definitely made a big 180 later on in my life um, when I went through a, a near-death experience, which we'll go through on Friday. Um, but someone, a teacher once told me, no one cares how good you are at yoga or meditation. It's not about getting mm -hmm. good at yoga or meditation. It's about getting good at life. Your yoga practice is, it's not, it's not a practice. It's a preparation for life. Mm -hmm. And so whether that is you're starting yoga because you have a physical ailment or you just feel like you need to have a little bit more spaciousness in your body or whether you're starting meditation because there's something specific going on in your life, meditation and yoga, they will have massive benefits from, you know, flexibility to strength to, you know, you know, being able to sit up like straight to being able to process your emotions and all that. Those are it's, it's, it's all a, a benefit of doing the practice, but truly it's a practice of getting good at life and no one's sitting there thinking she can't do a handstand. She can't touch her toes. She can't meditate for 10 minutes. It's not about that. It's not about how much better you get at the practice. It's about how much better you are at tolerating adversities when they come your way. How much better are you, are you at communicating your needs to your community and to your family? How much better are you getting at at riding the waves and the and and riding the plot twists that life throws at you, and that's truly what I I, t I think it takes a lot of the pressure off of the physical practice that people kind of get roadblocked with. They're like, oh, I can't do yoga because I can't touch my toes. I can't meditate because I can't sit still for more than five minutes. And it's like, okay, well, let's just start where you're at because it's actually not about getting good at the practice it's getting good at what's happening in your life getting good at being a human um and that's different for everyone right amen. um so yeah that's that's what i'll leave you there with <laughs> amen and, and you meant uh and in closing what well, very well put um touching your toes me and seth we joke about it but in all reality when i'm 80 years old I want to be able to bend over, touch my toes and be able to wipe my own ass without needing assistance. And I think we're, we're on a good path that with the, my current yoga practice and, you know, doing a, a forward fold every night before I get into bed to loosen up those muscles. Um, I'll be able to do that when I'm 80 years old. And that's, uh, you know, you, you don't, you take these things for granted, but you only have one life and one chance at this body. So you better treat it well. And also one of the last things that um, I'm learning ongoing and listening to right now is you learn from yoga to listen to your body and when to mm -hmm. slow down and take a break, chill out. Um, so I'm forever grateful for the practice. I'll never be able to say it enough. I'm forever grateful for Chloe for helping me develop this practice and uh, reach this level of, of, mindfulness and uh, my yogi journey and that we're having this conversation and you sharing your story on Friday. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful community. I, I thought I would only ever be a arts and culture and community advocate. And now I've, you know, slowly becoming a yoga advocate, which is why I asked you that question and I appreciate you answering. Um, so hopefully this podcast, let alone her creative Zen story can help inspire to change one person's life and maybe they'll take a class. And even if you don't have the funds to take a class, there's plenty of free yoga videos on YouTube. You could be there on your living room. You don't need a mat. You could do yoga in your bed. You could do yoga in a chair. There's you know a million different ways. So uh, you can find out more about yoga. You can find out more about life this Friday, creative Zen. Don't hesitate to reach out to Kelly uh, we genuinely appreciate your time and insight, and uh, we'll see you guys on Friday. Cheers. See you Friday. Thanks, Evan. Pleasure. Thank you.